Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the soon to be released Just Flight F-28 Professional. The product is now on a short final and Just Flight were once again kind enough to reach out asking whether or not I would like to take a preview look at the F-28. This is an add-on that I've very much been looking forward to myself so I was certainly more than happy to oblige. And as usual during the video today we're going to be taking a detailed look at the F-28 Professional carrying out a full flight all the way through from a cold and dark start right through to landing at destination. Once again though the version of the aircraft that we'll be looking at here today is an early access version of the product. As such all of the usual caveats do apply the product is still a work in progress. So there may still be one or two minor niggles that we may come across along the way that still currently need ironing out with the aircraft. Indeed just flight themselves are aware of a couple of areas that still need work, namely there the autopilot and the flight director still need some refinement, there are one or two liveries as well that just need a bit of a touch up. So with that in mind not looking to carry out a full review of the product but certainly endeavouring to demonstrate the F-28 to you as best I can. One point that is worth noting here ahead of the flight, for the video today we're going to be using the 8K cockpit texture set for the F-28. By default the aircraft does come with a 4K cockpit texture set but Just Flight will ultimately be providing both texture sets with the product, presumably for those of you using the aircraft on a PC. Anyway, in terms of our flight today, once again we are going to be carrying out a full flight, and as you can see we're going to be carrying out an historic ANSET Australia flight. We're currently on the ground at Kalgoorlie Airport, we're going to be taking the F-28 back home towards Perth. The flight time today should be around one hour, we're going to be working our way up towards flight level 300 for the cruise. We're expecting 65 passengers on board the jet and we're going to be uploading 7.2 tonnes of fuel. As always ladies and gents I do hope you enjoy the video, if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. We've just about completed our walk around now of the jet here on the ground in Kalgoorlie. So let's make our way up the air stairs and onto the flight deck of Just Flight's F-28 Professional. So today we find ourselves on the apron here at Kalgoorlie's Boulder Airport, of course in the cockpit of the Just Flight F-28 Professional. We've just boarded a completely cold and dark jet as you can see. The aim there of course as usual we're going to run through the full startup process and give you an idea of the level of systems depth that Just Flight have modelled on the aircraft. Before we run through our pre-start checks we first need to get the aircraft electrically powered then. So firstly we'll come up to the electrical panel, check our battery voltages. But just above 25 volts there on battery 1 and same there on battery 2 so we'll get the battery master on We're going to supply the aircraft electrical network via the APU so we'll run through an APU fire extinguishing test as you can see there we do have an APU fire warning light and we should momentarily get the extinguishing test light there as well which we do so test complete we'll reset that Next coming up to the APU panel, making sure that the Gen 3 selector is in the off and reset position. APU main switch is selected on, APU air is selected off, and on the air conditioning panel we'll have the left side of the system there selected to the on position, we'll leave the right side in the off reset position. For the APU start then we'll hit the APU starter. And you can see they're showing a draw on the battery as we spool up the APU. RPM coming up, once we come through 45% we should see the start light go out. Just peaking there around 650 degrees on the TGT. And now just waiting here for the APU to stabilise at 100%. And for the temperature there to stabilise as well, that should happen around 400 degrees. So we do have a good start there on the APU, the TGT and the RPM have stabilised. The Gen 3 switch can go on, and we now have the APU supplying the entire electrical network. You can hear the avionics fans there as well, coming online. As well, we'll select the bleed air on, get some cooling air going down the back. It's a pretty hot day here on the ground in Kalgoorlie, currently around 31 degrees. So we do have a good start there on the APU. We'll get the master radio switches on. And for the pre-flight check, firstly back to the electrical panel. Battery voltages have been checked, we'll check the APU generator output, they were showing just below 400 cycles and 115 volts. The emergency exit lights are set through to armed, constant speed drives are both guarded. On the engine panel, the start master is selected off, start selector in the neutral position and the igniter is set through to normal. 
With the bleed air supply, panel is configured correctly. We've got the HP there set auto, LP set through to on. Air conditioning supply, again, we've got the left system currently selected on. We'll leave the right system in the off reset position for now. And for the temperature selectors there, we've got those both set through to auto. Airfoil anti-icing, not required obviously at the moment. We'll leave that in the off reset position. And for the engine anti-icing, same there, we'll leave that off for the time being. p and vane heating is currently selected off. Windshield heating, we're above 20 degrees Celsius outside, so we'll leave that in the off position for the time being. On the pressurization panel, we're going to be climbing up to flight level 300 for the flight today. And according to the manual, we want to set 1,000 foot above our cruising altitude, so we'll select flight level 310. We've got 310 selected, that's giving us a cabin altitude there of around 6,000 feet. Rate right there is set through to the default position, but the pressurization system is checked. And lastly, the no smoking signs and the seatbelt signs can go on. We've already got the jet fully fueled up, we've got about 7 tonnes of fuel on board the aircraft, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment's time. So the overhead setup is complete for the glare shield. Nav radio is already set. We've got 114 decimal one on both nav one and nav two. That's the Kalgoorlie VOR. We'll just make sure both units are set through to DME. You can see we are already picking up the station. We're about 0.4 miles from the VOR station. The fuel shuttle valve indicators are both displaying open, which is what we're expecting to see. We'll carry out a GPWS test. Light slow, pull up. Light slow. Pull. There we get there. On the left side panel, the central warning and caution system will test that. And you can see all of the lights are displaying correctly. We'll just cancel the master warning. Nose wheel steering switch is on and guarded, and the alternate wheel brake handles both selected forwards. For the left hand instrument panel, just checking our flight instruments. There's 060 on the heading for the HSI, 060 there on the compass. Everything looking good in terms of the altimeter. You know, it's 1007. That's giving us an aerodrome elevation of 1,200 feet, which is correct. As you can see here, Kalgoorlie, 1,200 foot on the aerodrome elevation. So, flight instruments are checked for the speed attitude command system. Essentially, the autopilot will set that up for the departure. So, initially, we want to be in heading on the flight director. We're going to be pitching initially for 10 degrees. We've got 10 degrees selected and heading. Climbing straight up to our cruise altitude today, so flight level 300. We have flight level 300 set. And initially we're going to be tracking off the Kalgoorlie VOR on a course of 238, so we'll set that up on both Nav 1 and Nav 2. I really like as well the fact that the rotary selectors do work at a reasonable speed, that's often not the case in the sim. Makes setting up the aircraft a little bit more expeditious, a little bit less tedious. We have 238 on both course 1 and course 2. We'll just leave nav 1 selected for the time being. And on the heading bug, we'll set that for runway heading. So, heading of 110. Speed attitude command system is set. The static pressure selector is set normal and guarded. On the compass, we have that slaved and guarded. The hydraulic electric pump switches are both guarded. And we'll just test our skid control. Good test there on the left. And same there on the right. The central instrument panel is checking our engine gauges. Everything reading correctly. Aircraft weight currently showing just below 31 tonnes. Hydraulic supplies are checked. We should have just above 1600 PSI there for the brakes, so we'll just use the electric pump for hydraulic system 1 just to charge those up a little bit further. And now showing above 2000 PSI. Fuel pressure indicator lights we do have, we're expecting to see those at the moment. The fuel filter iced warning lights, just test both of those. The TVIs, we can carry out a test there on the TVIs. I believe that stands for the Vibration indicators, you can see there we've got around just above three and a half units there on both sides, so the test is complete. Central caution lights are set to bright. Fuel quantities, showing around 3,600 kilos there in each wing tank, and that's what we're expecting to see. Again, we've got around 
7.2 tonnes of fuel on board the aircraft to get us back towards Perth. Lift dumpers are disarmed, the lever is stowed, TTC switches, a little bit tricky to see down here, they're hidden just behind the throttles. You can see those are both set through to take off. The speed brake, again that's stowed, same for the flaps. And we're indicating flap zero. The cross feed pump switch is selected off. Boost pumps will just check in turn. So good pressure there on number one, on the forward there on the left. And same on the aft. And good there as well on the right. And that's all four booster pumps checked. Transfer pumps. They fuel in the centre tank and you can see there we do have the pump central tank caution illuminated. Light switches for now we'll just take the nav lights on. And for the communications and avionics no need for the comm radios today. No need as well for the ODF. Just set the transponder through to standby. Squawking mode Charlie and we'll leave ourselves squawking 2000 there as well. Autopilot, we have both the roll and the pitch channel selected in. For the time being we'll leave both the autopilot master and the, the oil damper off. Hydraulic flight control panel, they're just checking we have all switches selected to the on position. Of course at the moment we have the portion lights there with no hydraulic supply to the flight controls. Flight control lock is selected on and the alternate landing gear handle is selected up. Same run through there on the right hand side, once again checking the flight instruments. Those all reading correctly, as they should be. Static pressure and pitot selector are both normal and guarded. Door warning lights, just the uh, forward passenger door there at the moment. We'll carry out a test. And you can see there, all three lights working correctly. We've currently got the cargo doors closed up. The landing gear warning switch, once again that is normal and guarded. Same there for the HSI, that's set through to slave and guarded. And we'll have the first officer there select his warning and caution system test. Also checking the cabin ventilation shuttle valve. And finally setting the flight recorder. So that's the pre-flight check complete. We are now ready for the engine start. However, before we work our way through that process, let's just have a quick walk through the passenger cabin. We'll take a brief look at that. And then we can come back to the flight deck and we'll continue on with the process. Welcome to our safety presentation. Your safety is most important to us. Please give us your full attention for the next few minutes. Your seatbelt should now be fastened. To tighten, pull this strap. To release, lift the clasp. Your luggage should be in the overhead lockers or under the seat in front of you. Electronic equipment can interfere with aircraft systems. Please turn off your mobile phone now and for the duration of the flight. Okay, so everybody is now on board the jet. We've just got the forward passenger door closed up. Closed up the cockpit door there as well. Again, we are now ready for the start. So for the before start checks, the rudder pedals, seats and harnesses are adjusted and secure. Electrical power and bleed air supply. Would you check the electrical power output? Bleed air supply is selected on there from the APU. Brake pressure is checked. The part brake is selected on. Fuel quantities. Once again, about 3,600 kilos there in each wing tank. That's checked against the flight plan. Pressurization is set. The thrust index, as calculated by the manual, we want a thrust index today of 139. And that's set there on both thrust index indicators. Nav aids, again, are set. We have the Kalgoorlie VOR on both Nav 1 and Nav 2. Ship's papers are on board. The takeoff data. So coming down to the takeoff data card, it's going to be a flaps 18 takeoff today. We've got a fairly short takeoff run available. That's going to give us a V1 and VR of 126, V2 is 134. And if we hit the takeoff data card there, that will automatically set the V speed bugs. Ground locks, or rather the gust lock, is removed. And windows and doors. As best I can tell, the window is not currently operable on the aircraft, but both windows are closed, door lights are out, and the cockpit door is closed. We are cleared for the start, so the anti-collision lights can go on. Bottle levers are in the idle position. HP fuel valve levers are both shut. 
boost pump switches. Our selected on. And coming up to the engine panel, the start master is selected on. We're going to be starting the number two first. We'll move the start selector through to the number two position. And you can see there we have the starter valve light illuminated. The bleed air spy there automatically closing to use the bleed air for the starter assist. And we're waiting here till we come up through 15 to 20% on the HP RPM. Okay, so we do have a good start there on the number two. We'll do the same for the number one. Go back up to the engine panel. Start selector can go through to number one start. Start valve light is illuminated. And back down to the HP RPM gauge. Again, just wait until we come through 20% here before we introduce the fuel. Just coming up through 15%. And there's our 20%. So the HP fuel valve lever can go through to the start position. There's our igniter lights. Monitoring the oil pressure, that's just starting to come up. And just waiting here till we see an increase in TGT, which we now have, so we have a good light off there on the engine. And as before, waiting till either 50% HP RPM or 400 degrees, there's our 400 degrees. The HP fuel even go through to the open position. So both engines look good, we do have two good starts. Running through the after start checks. The central warning and caution system, all of our lights are out, we'll just cancel the master warning once again. HP fuel valve levers are both set open, fuel pressure warning lights are out, ignite lights as well both out. Start valve light is out, the start master switch can go off. Generator lights are both out. The generator 3 switch can come off. We'll just check the generator output there first. So Gen 1 looking good. And same there on Gen 2. The APU generator can go off. Same there for the APU bleed air. And we'll get the APU master off there as well. Air conditioning main switches are both selected on. And for the AC and DC buses, we'll just check the buses here as well. Now we'll check the TRUs, the DC buses. Everything looking good. Engine anti ice switches can go through to auto. Windshield heating switches can go through to low. The Peter and Vane heating switches both selected on. Hydraulic supplies are checked, good there on both the hydraulic quantities and pressures. Electric pump switches are both off and guarded. The flight control lights are all out. And for the flaps, again it's going to be a flaps 18 takeoff, so we'll select flaps 18. We have flaps 18 selected and just waiting here till we see flaps 18 indicated. So the flaps are set for the taxi checks, the flight instruments. Once again, just a quick scan of those. They're checked and set. The trim, we want five units nose up based on our current CFG and we have five units nose up selected. The collector tank indicators are both out, that means we do have a decent amount of fuel there in both collector tanks. 
Flaps once again 18 selected and indicated and we've predicated our takeoff date there on flaps 18. Pre briefing is complete, the taxi light is set on. That's the taxi check is complete. Part brake is selected off. Now we'll just swing the aircraft around to the right. We're going to be taxiing away out for runway 11. Okay, so we now have ourselves lined up here on runway 11, just running through our lineup checks. Brake temperatures are checked, the APU is selected off, lift dumpers are armed, flight controls you know, full up, pull down, and neutral, pull left, pull right, and neutral, and on the rudders, pull left, pull right. And neutral. Your damping is selected in. Transponder is set on. Landing lights are selected on. Same there for the flare and the exit lights. And we'll set those through to extend. Weather radar. Not really necessary for the flight today. There shouldn't be any weather on route, but we'll select it on nevertheless. It is worth noting, as with most aircraft in the sim, currently the weather radar is effectively inoperative. But anyway, we've got that set through to weather and a range of 50 miles. Just the lineup check is complete, we'll take the part brake off. According to the manual, we want to hold the aircraft here on the brakes as we come up on the engines. So initially we'll come through to 50% on the RPM and allow the engines to stabilise. And now coming through to 100% here on the thrust index gauges. That's going to give us our takeoff power based on our previous calculation. Power set. Okay, power is set. Engine's looking good. Off the brakes. One thing I do find about the aircraft, it's very twitchy on the rudder, even during the taxi, but the same is true during the takeoff, so I think that needs a little bit of tweaking. You can see here, really having to put in lots of minor corrections to keep us straight down the runway. That's checked. And back on the oak. Again, initially pitching for 10 degrees, nose up. Positive climb. Gear up. We do have positive climb, we'll take the gear up. Uh, just waiting here till we're up through 500 feet. There's 500. We'll start our turn out towards the west. We'll make a left-hand turn. Speed is checked. We'll go flaps 11 initially. 
and we are now through our minimum clean speed so we'll continue to retract the flaps we'll just keep our nose up for now just up through 1500 feet so we can start to accelerate now up towards 250 knots set that there on the speed index there's 250 selected and flaps up We'll pitch for around 5 degrees nose up, just up through 3,500 feet. And we'll set climb thrust here on the TTC switches. There's climb selected. The after takeoff checks, the landing gear is up, lights are out, flaps are selected up. Lift dumpers are checked in. And we'll just hold the rest of the checklist here till we've made our way around the corner. On the flight direct here we can set 5 degrees now for the pitch. So we're just going to let the aircraft accelerate up towards 250 knots. Once we're around the corner, we'll get the autopilot in. We'll use heading and IS hold initially. We'll slew the heading bug around here as well. So we got 27, clear our approach. Clear our approach. Come on to heading around 220 to intercept that radial outbound. You can see we're about 5 miles out from the VOR currently. Up through 5,500 feet. There's Kalgoorlie off the left wing. You can see the mine there as well, I believe. The town is known for gold mining, but I know there's a lot of iron ore mining in this part of the world as well. You can see the airfield there after our 9 o'clock. There's 250 knots, we'll pitch to maintain that. And we're pretty close into the station here, so we're not going to track directly back towards the VOR. Again, we'll come to heading around 220 to pick up the radial outbound on our course of 238. The aircraft hand flies very nicely overall, just with the exception of that rudder during the takeoff. The F-28 does feel like a pretty light, small jet in terms of how it handles on the controls. Maybe just a touch too instantaneous on the controls. And shortly coming around onto our heading. Currently still tracking in towards the station at the moment. And again, we'll just level out on a heading of roughly 220. Up through 8,000. Transition altitude, I believe, is 10,000 feet. Sure enough, it is 10,000. Okay, so good on the heading for now. And good there as well on the speed. You can see they're showing just slightly slow on the speed index. So we'll just trim out slightly nose down there. Happy with where we are now in terms of the aircraft, so we'll take the autopilot in. And as we discussed, we're coming to heading. The autopilot can be a little bit abrupt at times, just like have stated that they do plan to continue to refine the autopilot and the flight director. We'll just pitch down slightly, we're currently in pitch mode. Just get ourselves back towards 250 knots and then we'll go into IES hold. Just up through 10,000 feet so we can accelerate now up towards 270 knots. And we'll set the altimeters through to a QNH of 1013. We've got 1013 there on the left and same there on the right. And again, we'll just pitch the nose down. Let that speed build up. Tracking now away from the station, we should start to see that radio come in shortly. We'll cycle the seatbelt signs. Let the camera crew start working. And up through 10,000, we'll get the landing lights off. Same there for the flare lights and the exit lights. And we can retract those. So six miles out from the station, just running through the last of the after takeoff items. Landing lights are off. Engine anti-icing is set through to auto. Pressurization is checked. Looks like we're still coming up there on the Delta PSI at the moment. Still showing a cabin altitude of around 700 feet. We'll leave the fastest e-belt signs on just a little bit longer. And since we're going period appropriate here, we'll get the no smoking signs off as well. So you can see the aircraft continuing to accelerate here up towards 270. Let's pitch down again slightly. We should see the CDI bar come in very shortly. Again, climbing up to a cruise out of flight level 300. As soon as we see that speed index come in, we'll come into IS hold. We'll just let ourselves get slightly fast here, otherwise I find the aircraft tends to want to drive the nose down to maintain the speed. 
Just coming there as well onto the CDI bar, we'll just channel up that intercept. Four, two, six, and looking good there now on the speed, so we'll go, oh yes, hold. You can see a slightly aggressive capture there. So again, another little area of the autopilot that does need some refinement. Now onto the CDI bar. So we're coming to beam. And you can see we are showing beam there on the FMA. We'll centre up the heading bug. And the F-28 now pitching nose up to maintain 270 knots here in the climb. 14 miles out now from the VOR. And everything looking good. Okay, so we are just approaching our top of climb. As you can see, just coming up through flight level 290. Again, cruising at flight level 300. One little issue with the autopilot as it stands. Currently the height hold mode doesn't work particularly well. You tend to end up oscillating rather a lot around your target height. So I find at the moment it's actually preferable to just use pitch hold. So we'll come back into pitch. And we'll level off here at flight level 290 instead. Good thrust setting here for the cruise is around 95%. That seems to hold us pretty well at Mach 0.7. We'll start going back on the thrust levers. No auto throttle in the F-28. The thrust is fairly well managed during the takeoff and the climb as you've seen there with the TTC system. That keeps the turbine gas temperature within limits during the takeoff and the climb. And again, manual thrust control during the cruise is pretty similar in terms of automation capability as the Just Flight 146 Professional, so if you're familiar with that aircraft You'll have a pretty good idea of how much functionality you have here on the F-28. One other minor niggle at the moment, the pressurisation system, for whatever reason on this particular flight, doesn't seem to have kicked in correctly. You can see we're actually pretty high there on the Delta PSI. Cabin altitude is still down at 1,000 feet. That's a little bit of a bug that obviously just needs ironing out. I've done a few flights in the aircraft at this point, and certainly previously the pressurisation system has worked. It is worth noting during my recordings, I do tend to do quite a few resets and positioning the aircraft around and clicking through various systems, so it does tend to introduce more bugs than you might see on a typical flight from A to B. But again, obviously something that just needs fixing up by just flight. Anyway, nicely established now in the cruise. Still just a slight climb there, so we'll just pitch down. One more notch there on the pitch control. We're currently now over waypoint Nala, so we'll come on to a heading of 245. And as you can see, we've lost the Kalgoorlie VOR. So we'll tune up now Perth, which is on a frequency of 113.7. And yeah, looks like we are picking up the Perth VOR there. Currently showing 174 miles out from Perth itself. Good now on the heading. Just adjusting our pitch once again. So in terms of the flight plan, now tracking inbound towards waypoint Hampton. And Hampton will set up the course bar here to display the waypoint based off the Perth VOR. So Hampton is outbound on a course of 108, 90 miles from Perth. We'll set 108 here on both course bars. Again, not ideal having to use pitch here and have to constantly adjust, but I'm sure that Just Flight will have that issue ironed out pretty quickly. IS hold work pretty nicely as you can see, it's just that height hold at the moment. So we've got 108 there on both sides. Essentially there as we come onto the course. As the course bar comes in, we should arrive at around 90 miles again from the Perth VOR. That's going to be Waypoint Hampton. From Hampton we're going to be tracking towards Beverly. 
and we'll take vectors off Beverly on a westerly course inbound towards Perth, the LS. So that's, that's pretty much the established here now on the cruise. You can see we're nicely doing Mach 0.9, up to around 95% there on the RPM gauge. Plenty of rather beautiful and very rugged scenery here en route as we make our way inbound towards Perth. So we'll take the option as usual here in the cruise to enjoy some of that scenery, enjoy the visual model of the aircraft. I'm also going to carry out a short briefing here on the onboard tablet. We'll run through the functionality there. We're looking at about 30 minutes or so here in the cruise. Top of descent will be around 90 miles out from the field. So we'll just continue for now on the airway and as usual we'll come back just before top of descent into Perth. The briefing and the arrival. Can we set direct to uh, one go? Uh, Ethan, November Quebec Tango. Let me clear direct one go. Clear direct one go, November Quebec Tango. So the bridge today, velocity 9338 on descent to 9000, receive golf. Velocity 9338, that's bridge today. So now that we have ourselves up at flight level 290, inbound towards Perth, I thought we'd take a moment to briefly run through the onboard tablet and its functionality. Starting with the main menu, firstly we have the operational flight plan. Here we can import a sim brief flight plan straight onto the aircraft. We have a map functionality which is fairly self-explanatory, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Charts functionality, the ability to set up the aircraft, the ability to take notes as well on the tablet which certainly could be useful in a VATSIM environment. We also have checklists included not only in the tablet, also built into the sim, also included in the manual. We have a basic top of descent calculator, which is quite useful for the F-28. Again, the automation on the aircraft is pretty limited. And lastly, we have a few basic settings for the tablet. And again, we'll take a look at those in just a moment's time. We're not going to be taking a look at the OFP functionality here today, since I've not generated a sim brief flight plan for our flight. So moving straight onto the map page, as you can see there, pretty straightforward. We have an open street map by the looks of things moving map. Always a nice option to have, it's nice to know where you are in the world. I found the map display can take a little bit of time to load, but once it's loaded up it works very nicely. And as you can see we are currently just out towards the east of Perth. The chart functionality we'll just touch on very briefly, as again I think it's fairly self-explanatory and certainly you'll get a chance to look at the charts as we go. You will need a Navigraph subscription to make use of the charts, and for those who aren't aware that is a paid subscription. Again, the charts can take a little bit of time to load, but otherwise work very seamlessly, and it's a really great function to have on board the jet. The aircraft menu allows us to configure the F-28 in various respects. Firstly, as you'll have seen during the walk around, we have the ability to add and remove chocks, ground power, open up the four passenger door. We can also control the aircraft's weight and balance from this particular menu, so we can load fuel, load passengers, load cargo. We can select various panel states. We have cold and dark, ready for takeoff, and the aircraft in a turnaround state. And we also have the ability to make a couple of cabin crew announcements, which is a nice touch. We can see the cabin crew for the takeoff and for the landing. We can also release them for the service. We also have readouts of the aircraft CNG, which is relevant for setting the horizontal stabilizer during the takeoff, as well as weight readouts of the jet, depending on your configuration. Somewhat hidden away on the top left of the aircraft menu, we also have the aircraft settings. This allows us to configure the F-28 more specifically. We can choose whether or not we have the two altimeters synced or independent. Similarly, we can choose between a mechanical vertical speed indicator or a digital one with TCAS functionality. You can also turn off panel state saving, which is a nice touch. There's also the option for pilot callouts, cabin callouts. The flip chart options, I believe, pertains to the takeoff data card. We can choose the gauge refresh rate, which will ultimately, I would imagine, affect the FPS of the aircraft. We can choose to display the pilot models internally, which is a nice feature. We can also choose whether or not we display the interior cabin model, again just to save on some FPS. On the external model we can choose whether or not we have the engine hush kits fitted. And we can also choose whether or not we have a GPS fitted. Should you so wish you can switch out the weather radar for a GNS 530. The last couple of options, we can choose whether or not we want cabin ambient sounds. We can also choose whether or not we want to tie the rudder axis to the nose wheel steering. And we can select as well whether or not we get rad out callouts from the GPWS. As discussed, the product does come with a full set of checklists, both built into the sim, built into the tablet, and also included in the manual. We're making use of the paper checklist here today, but the tablet functionality is certainly very nice. You can tick off each individual item as you go, and the checklist will also tell you how many items you completed, what the progress of the checklist is. So certainly there, a nice little aid memoir for operating the jet. 
We also have a basic top of descent calculator included with the aircraft. You can plug in your current altitude, your current ground speed, select your target altitude and the desired descent path. Nice as well, you can actually just sync the altitude to your current aircraft altitude, same there with the ground speed. And the aircraft will then calculate your top of descent point, so in this particular case we want to start descending 85 miles outside of Perth, targeting their 2,200 feet per minute rate of descent. Lastly, in terms of the settings page, this actually pertains to the settings of the tablet itself. So firstly we can choose whether or not to have the clock there on the top left hand side in a 24 hour or 12 hour format. Similarly, we can choose whether or not we display local time or Zulu. The OFP user login name again relates to the Simbri flight plan functionality. We can switch between a night and a day theme for the tablet to make it easier to read under certain lighting conditions. And we can also adjust the brightness of the tablet up and down. So again, overall, very nice functionality there. There are certainly plenty of useful tools available from the tablet to help you navigate the F-28 and your flight. Okay, so we're currently just turning over Waypoint Hampton, now tracking inbound towards Waypoint Beverly, where we'll pick up the approach as we discussed. Still maintaining flight level 300, we can descend down to 3000 here for the approach. There's no significant high terrain en route. And we'll take a look at the chart in just a second. We'll brief up the approach once we've got the aircraft descending. Just come through 90 miles now, so 30,000 feet times 3, around 90 miles is good for the top of descent. And you can see the MSA out towards the east of Perth is 3,000 feet. To carry out the descent, we'll come back into IES holds. And we'll come further back off the power. Around 80% here on the RPM gives you a nice 2,000 feet per minute rate of descent. 85 seems to give you around 500 feet per minute. So we'll come back to 80 for now, we'll get the aircraft descending. If we trend low on profile, we'll come back towards 85. So power set, you can see we're descending around 1500 feet per minute there currently. And check about 80 miles to run. Leaving the speed at 270 knots for now, we'll come back of course towards 250 as we approach 10,000 feet. So running through the descent checks. Worth noting there as well, we are nicely established here on the CDI. We could actually come back into beam for now to track the course inbound. And Waypoint Beverly is 40 miles out from Perth, so once we see 40 there on the DME, we'll track out towards the west on our supposed vectors. So in terms of the descent checks, faster seatbelt signs can go back on. We'll get the no smoking signs on there as well. Pressurisation again, unfortunately didn't come good there during the flight, but we should start to see that delta pressure come back now towards a more reasonable value as we descend. The TTC switches can go back through to takeoff. For the landing data, we're going to be using a 29 tonne card here, and for the landing, we're going to use flaps 42, so VRF is going to be 125. It looks as though flaps 25 is actually a permissible landing flap configuration, but I found previously using flaps 25 that I got a config warning, so we'll go flaps 42 today. So landing data has been checked, the bugs are set, we'll set the ref later on of course. For the crew briefing, so again the plan, we're currently tracking about towards Beverly, again that's going to be 40 DME from the Perth VOR on a frequency of 113.7, which we've got tuned up currently on Nav 1 and Nav 2. From Beverly we're just going to vector ourselves out towards the west. Can't really fly the arrival here as it's an RNAV arrival, and obviously we're not RNAV capable. But we'll fly out towards the west and then we'll intercept the ILS for runway 03. That's on a frequency of 110.1. We'll tune that up now on NAV2, just as a reminder more than anything. Then by the start of 3000, cleared ILS, runway 03, velocity 9338. So 110.1. For the ILS itself, it's going to be the ILS Zulu, runway 03, it's plate 11 1. Final approach course is 016. And again, we'll just tune that up here on course number 2 as a bit of a memory aid for later. 016 there on course 2. Approaching 25,000 feet, 
that means we need 75 miles to run. Interesting there, looks like we've lost the Perth DME for the time being. I think that's just as a result of not tracking directly in towards the station. We're still showing 63 miles there on the HSI. So for the RLS, once again, it's plate 11 1. It's the RLS Zulu for runway 03, frequency 110.1. The identifier is India Papa November, final approach course 016. Aerodrome elevation 67 feet, we're going down to an MDA of 270. That's a decision height of 203. We've got 200 set currently. There's 203 on the rad out. For the missed approach, it's track 016. And then at 1500 feet, a left turn, tracking 300, climbing up to 3000 feet. In terms of the terrain, you can see we do have some terrain out towards the east of the field, but again, fairly low down. The MSA 3000 feet. Otherwise, it's an absolutely beautiful day. Just a bit of high level cloud around, light winds, temperature again 31 degrees, and the QNH, same as out of Calgary, it's uh, 1007. In terms of the landing, landing on 03 will vacate off to the left, no auto brake on the aircraft, we do have the lift dumpers, they're automatic, and we'll take the speed brake just as we come over the threshold, so manual braking. I believe as well no reverse thrust on the F-28, which is quite interesting. 274, velocity 9338. Fuel wise, down now at around 2,600 kilos there on each wing tank, so around 5,200 kilos. Roughly a tonne an hour on each engine at cruise speeds. They've got about two and a half hours worth of fuel on board the jet currently. And that makes sense, I planned to arrive into Perth, we're not carrying an alternate today, so we've got an extra two hours worth of fuel, plus an extra 20 minutes of contingency. So a fairly short flight here, but based off those fuel figures, it seems as though the fuel burn on the F-28 is pretty accurate. Anyway, that's the briefing complete, just coming down through 21,000 feet. So we need about 60 miles to run, currently showing 50. We're still a little bit high as a result, so we'll just come further back on the thrust. Come back to around 70% now on the RPM. We'll just increase that descent rate, we'll get ourselves back on profile. There's the gear warning horn. So we'll just keep the throttles just above 70%. That's giving us 2,000 feet per minute on the vertical speed, so that should get us nicely back on profile. 20,000 feet, 47 miles to run. And again, just coming up on 46 miles, so getting ready to make that westerly turn to vector ourselves in for the RLS. We can do that slightly ahead of time here, so we'll come on to a heading of 270. And we'll come back into heading hold. You can see the coast now off the nose, and again you can see that terrain that we mentioned during the briefing. Pretty low level overall. Should just about be able to make Perth out off the nose as well, but I think we're a little bit far out to see anything clearly currently. Anyway, we'll continue here in the descent, vectoring ourselves out towards the west. And as I say, we'll pick up the RLS, track that inbound towards runway 03. Four City 9218, first approach, good day. Decent by start at 4000. Four City 1840, decent by start at 3000, clear to RLS approach. Uh, December, I start at 3000, clear to RLS runway 03, North City 1840. Four City 9218, would you speak at 230 knots? 230 knots. Okay, so we are now approaching Perth, we're just coming down through 5,000 feet, showing around 18 miles to run, so looking pretty good here in terms of our profile. Just reducing our speed now back towards 180 knots. So we'll come all the way back to idle now on the throttles, cancel the gear warning horn, let that speed start to reduce. We've got the Perth VOR tuned up once again on NAV2, just to give us an RMI bearing. Currently showing around 325, and again the inbound course 016. That's just going to give us a nice idea of when we need to make the turn. The aircraft currently tracking level, we'll make sure we keep the aircraft here in a descent. Again, just aiming for 500 feet per minute, showing just below the glide. We'll stay on a heading of 270 for now. 
Just coming up through 330 there on the RMI. And again, once we see that speed index starts to come in, we'll come back up on the power, maintain 180 knots. We'll start configuring as well. There's 200 knots now on the speed. We'll go through to the first stage of flap. And without the speed brake, the F28 is actually pretty slippery. It doesn't like to slow down all that much. So we'll come all the way through to flaps 18 just to give ourselves some drag here during the initial stages of the approach. There's flaps 18 selected. And indicated. Coming back up on the throttles now to maintain the speed. We'll maintain 500 feet per minute on the rate of descent for the time being. And heading still looking good. We'll run through the approach checklist. So no smoking signs. Are selected on altimeters. We have a QNH. 1007 set on both altimeters. Anti-ice is set as required and the landing lights. Select the landing lights on again, same there for the flare and the exit lights and set those through to extend. It's so around 55% now on the RPM, that's giving us 180 knots. And again looking pretty nice here in terms of the glide slope. RMI needle now just coming through the northerly heading. So we'll turn now 90 degrees to our intercept course. Start heading inbound towards the field. There's 1,000 to go. Just coming up slightly higher on the power here again, just to maintain the speed. We'll maintain 180 knots till around 7 DME, just coming through 14 miles currently. And about another 800 feet to go here before we level off at 3,000. So obviously the coastline, very visible now off the nose. We should come pretty much overhead Jandicott Airfield. We've got Perth out at our 1 o'clock and you can actually see the CBD down there off at our 2 o'clock. That descent rate just getting a little bit higher so we'll pitch the nose up once again. And we can start the turn now onto a more reasonable intercept heading for the RLS. We'll go with around 330 for now. The RMI just coming through 010. So pretty happy with where we are at the moment. Speed's good. We've got flaps 18. We'll hold the gear. Slightly low now on the glide. Again, we should come back onto glide here with a nice low descent rate. We're only doing around 300 feet per minute or so. The CDI bar there just coming in, so we'll turn on to our heading. And once we come round onto the heading, we'll come back into beam capture. Press approach unity 6041 descending 9000, request up to 5 miles left of route due weather. Okay, so there's beam, we have that on the FMA. We'll centre up the heading bug again, you can hear our call outs there from the first officer. Those are a little bit quiet, that was the case as well with the Just Flight 146, it'd be nice if those were just a little bit louder. And leveling off now here at 3000, we'll arm up the glide. You can see that is armed. The glide slope just coming in. I'm just having to come up on the throttles again, slightly here to maintain the speed as we level off. 10 miles to run, 3000 feet just coming onto the glide, so profile looks good. You can see the runway there off the nose. And now the aircraft ascending here to follow the glide slope, so back off the power levers, maintain 180 knots. We'll start bringing the speed back towards 160. And again, VREF for the landing at flaps 42 is going to be 125 knots. Off the throttles then, we'll let that speed start to reduce. Just coming up on 8 miles, so we'll take the gear down. 2500. For the landing checks, the landing gear is selected down, just waiting on three greens. Unity 60, 41, first approach, g'day, this must start to 4,000, five miles left, approved, report clear of the weather. All the way back off the throttles now to maintain 160. Just waiting there on the main wheels. We have three greens. Flaps 25. We'll take flaps 25. 
Brake pressures are checked, lift dampers are armed. And just holding down the flaps, we'll set V-Ref. 10 via start to 4000 and clear up to 5 miles left through UC 6041. We'll take V-Ref plus 5, so 130 knots for the approach speed, just coming through 6 miles. Been good now in terms of speed, so back up on the power levers. And again, ordinarily I'd probably go with flaps 25 here for the landing, we've got plenty of runway into Perth. But as I said previously, I've got a config warning, so we'll go all the way through to flaps 42. There's also going to be quite a bit of extra drag. And according to the manual, rather unusually, although again I believe it is the same with the 146. Just as we come over the threshold here, we want to take the speed brake. That should obviously help bring the speed back. Just a little bit of a flare should give a smooth touchdown. And then the lift dumpers again are automatic, so they'll deploy once we've got weight on wheels. So 4 miles, 1200 feet, speed looking good. Again, the DH is 203. Obviously, though, visual with the runway. Check 471, decent approach. That's checked. We are stable. Slightly hazier over here in Perth than it was out of Kalgoorlie. One thing I really like about the F-28, it is a very speed-stable aircraft. It's very easy to maintain the speed. You don't find yourself having to chase things around on the throttles. So just coming down through 700 feet, we'll disconnect the autopilot. Autopilot's out, manually flying. Two reds, two whites are on the Pappy. Looks like we've got an aircraft departing out towards the north. Let's check to 500. And again, overall the aircraft hand flies rather nicely. It's pretty easy here to maintain the vertical profile. We're not chasing around the Pappy or the glide all that much, just drifting slightly out to the left of the centre line. There's the MDA, we'll continue. And again, just remembering to take that speed break as we come over the thresholds. Even with the speed brakes there, a little bit of a long landing. Speed. Speed. Let's touch down. And you can see we do have the lift dump deployment. Again, no reverses. We'll start coming into the brakes and we'll take the second high speed exit off on the left. So there you go ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the Just Flight F-28 Professional. Once again this is an early access version of the product so most of the bugs that we've seen here today will no doubt be fixed up by Just Flight ahead of release. And as we've seen with the Just Flight 146 Professional, no doubt the product will continue to be refined thereafter. Once again with the F-28, Just Flight have produced another smashing add-on, I really enjoyed the aircraft. These sorts of add-ons are right up my street, an old school jet with very minimal automation, interesting systems as well. Again, one or two bugs there at the moment, the autopilot we've seen, there is a little bit of visual artifacting as well on the windshield, we had the pressurisation issues there during the flight. But once again, I'm sure that those issues will be fixed up, and it really will be the icing on a cake of what is otherwise a very solid effort. 
I'll just give you a general breakdown on the product. I'm sure that many of you will be looking to purchase the aircraft in the coming days. So starting with the visuals, as always they are a very nice effort from Just Flight. I really like the feel that Just Flight have given the jet once again. Just Flight are very good at giving the appropriate feel in terms of the texturing and the weathering to their aircraft. Next, moving on to the sounds, as I'm sure you'll have noticed throughout the flight they are a real forte of the product. The sound pack is absolutely superb both internally and externally. Again, as with the 146, the sound recordings of the F-28 sound to be incredibly authentic. I'm sure that Just Flight have been away and recorded the real aircraft. As far as the flight model goes, as I mentioned during the flight, the F-28 is a very nice aircraft hand fly, and certainly that is important since the jet doesn't rely particularly heavily on automation. Rudder and nose wheel steering responsiveness on the ground certainly needs another look at, I would say. The aircraft is overly sensitive there at the moment, a little bit unpleasant during the takeoff. But once you've got yourself airborne, it is very easy to maintain a particular attitude, a particular speed. Pretty straightforward to trim out the aircraft, fly by the numbers, which again is very important on such an aircraft. I do think at the moment the control responsiveness is perhaps just a touch snappy, but that's just conjecture on my part of course, not having flown the aircraft in the real world. Actually the F-28's flight model I have to say very much reminds me of the earlier versions of the 146 Professional. That aircraft has seen some significant improvements to the flight modelling since its release. I suspect we'll see further refinements to the F-28 as well in the flight modelling department. As far as the aircraft systems go, a very exemplary effort there from just flight. Certainly, with the F-28, we get a highly detailed, full fidelity replica of the Fokker F-28. Other than a few minor bugs, which we've already addressed, I can't find all that much to fault with the system's fidelity. No failure modelling as well with the jet, but I suspect, as with the 146, we may see that at a later date. Documentation with the product as well is absolutely superb, and again, that really goes to highlight the amount of system depth that the aircraft has been given. In the manual, you'll get a full breakdown of the aircraft systems, as well as guidance on how to fly the jet the various operating speeds. You'll also have outlined a full tutorial flight, a full set of checklists. Certainly using the documentation provided, I was able to get myself up to speed very quickly with the F-28. One last point on the systems, again the automation does need some further refinement, just flight are aware of that, so hopefully we'll see that ahead of release. The onboard EFB or tablet as well is a pretty strong offering. You'll have seen there during the flight that there's quite a bit of functionality there. Briefly touching on the aircraft's FPS, and again, do be aware this could change ahead of release, but during the flight today I was getting about 43 FPS in the F-28 versus around 67 FPS in the default Cessna 152. And once more, it's highly possible that just flight will refine the performance of the aircraft further as it matures. So to conclude, once again, I am obligated to point out this is an early access version of the F-28 Professional. There will still be a few changes, a few fixes, a few tweaks here ahead of release. But nevertheless, the product is slated to be released within the coming week. So what you've seen here today should hopefully be pretty representative of what you'll ultimately get for your purchase. I'll certainly be looking to come back and make another full flight with the aircraft once we have the release version in our hands. That may take a little bit of time though, depending on other commitments. Either way though, pending a couple of updates, a couple of bug fixes, and again, a couple of refinements, it's very clear that the F-28 Professional very much lives up to just flight's high standards. The jet is very interesting and a real joy to operate. It's really nice to have something different to fly in the sim. Xbox users will no doubt be pleased here as well that it's already been confirmed the aircraft will be releasing on the console. Anyway, that just about wraps up things for the video here today. Once again, very much looking forward to the release of the F-28 Professional. All that remains here is for me to say a big thank you to Just Flight for once again letting us take an early access look at the product. I do hope that all of you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you've yet to do so and you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. And as always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.